Good to everybody. This is Kevin Hogan. I'm the author of The Psychology of Persuasion, The Science of Influence, 22 other books that have been translated into 43 other languages, 43 other languages, as opposed to which other ones. 43 languages all across the world. Thank you for making that happen. I appreciate it. Today, the best for last. Here's the deal. For years, I've trained salespeople on how to make a sale when there's multiple options involved. This could be a car lot. It could be houses, right? It could be um, computers. It could be a phone. You might want to, do I want the Samsung? Do I want the iPhone? I chose the, uh, the Samsung this year. Why? Um, because she had a Samsung and I was like, yeah, let's try this one. You know, why not? It's similarity, right? It's liking. It's just a good strategy in life. So, and I was like, what the heck's the difference anyway? And there's not that much of a difference. So the best for last is this, all right? You're, you're looking at your client and you're going, you know what? My client has $25,000, they're 40 years old, and they're gonna have 50 grand when they retire, or 60 grand or 70 grand, which will pay for one year of their retirement. Okay, so basically they have nothing. And I need to get them to do something that's going to be a little more aggressive without being stupid, okay? so you're going to talk with them about, say, three options, okay? And the three options should be rational options because if the person chooses one and it's not the one you suggest, then you need it to be a good enough option that it's going to succeed for the person, okay? So you present it like this 100% of the time. This is just the big picture. I'll give details. It takes several videos to do this and we'll do several in the series. But basically you have A, B, and C. A is the one that they would currently be doing right now. They can continue on. They haven't lost anything. They're st stable. The market's very high right now. In fact, it is all around the world. Right now the markets are very high. Interest rates are at zero. There's nowhere else to stick money except for into the stock market unless you're willing to be okay with cash, which is basically a push, right? It's zero. So it's fine. That's fine. Nothing wrong with not losing. And that is the number one thing in investing, by the way, always. But that's what they're doing right now. And it's actually a pretty sound strategy. But the person that has to retire on this money, this is not their fun, like vacation fund for next month or six months from now or a year from now. This is stuff that they're going to retire on in 25 years. And they're only able to put together, uh, what was it? What did we say? $50,000 at age 40? That's nothing. They're dead. So you have to put together something that's more aggressive than standard. So in other words, you're going to put together bing, bing, and bing options. You're going to put that into package B. Same thing as now package be a little more aggressive. And the, next, the final one would be su substantially more aggressive. Aggressive. In other words, p chance for better um, increase. Right now, the US markets have gone up like 120% in the last eight years. But maybe China's only gone up half of that, or maybe Europe's gone up 50% of that, which is still a lot, but they still could theoretically peak out and do better. You're going to be working with your client long term, so you present it like this. You say, you know what? What you've done right now, you haven't lost a penny. First rule of investment, don't lose anything. You've done great at that. That is the first critical thing. People all the time do things that cost them big money. This is the number one cause of disaster in people's lives, okay? Because they don't do the thing that's going to stop them from making a huge, massive mistake, okay? The big loss, that's where you lose the right guy, the right girl, the $300,000 in cash, the whatever. And it's like, these are things that are really tough to beat, okay? Really tough to beat. And the second choice is something that would be a wise choice that would be suggested by someone else, okay? It would make sense for this person. And the third one is something that you specially devised for this person based upon their specific needs and where they need to be and giving them a chance at having the best possible future that you can create for them. You can't run the markets, but you can come up with a plan that overall should work better than either of the first two. And if you can't, you're in the wrong business, right? Okay, so you always present the idea that you really want that person to take last. And basically, this is also same. same do you want to go to, um, do you want to go to Italy? Do you want to go to France? Do you want to go to Spain? Okay. And so you say Italy, we were there last year, France, that was the suggestion, or we could go to Spain. Okay. So, and then you would propose each of these things with ideas and cool, cool, relevant features. And the idea, by the way, is this is the person that you're going with. This is the money that's this person's. You're getting paid the same no matter what, right? You're trying to do what's best for this person. So present it last. By the time you get to presented last, you know what, the, you've, they've forgotten everything else that happened before it, really, okay? People's memory is this short and it's this good, okay? Not at all. So make sure you put the ideas that you don't want them to take first and the one that you do want last. 
do not give people four or more choices. Cool? Do not give people four or more choices. Three is the max. All right? Okay, and we'll pick this up in a future video because there are there's all kinds of nuances here that you need to know about. It's just not pick the last one, but that's a good place to start. Until next time, you guys, I will say have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye.